guys, we're Ian and Anna, and for the past 30 days, we've been road tripping Switzerland in our van. In today's video, we're so excited to share with you the top 10 things to do in one of our favorite towns, Interlaken. Let's start with number 10, Harderkulm. Also known as the top of Interlaken, this overlook gives you the most breathtaking views of the entire region. At the top, you see Lake Brienz, Lake Thun, and the iconic Eiger, Monk, and Jungfrau mountain peaks. To get here, you can park at the Interlaken Ost train station and head on the 100-year-old vernacular all the way up to Interlaken's tallest mountain, Harder Kulm. At the top, you can have traditional Swiss dishes at the Panorama restaurant, which is super cool right on the edge of the mountain. You can even walk out on the Two Lakes Bridge for the best view, and what's interesting is that the two lakes below have different shades of blue. You have the bright turquoise water of Lake Brienz on the left, and the deep blue water of Lake Thun on the right. From Harder Kulm, you can go on one of Switzerland's most iconic heights, the Harder Grot Trail. This 15-mile hike will take you along the most spectacular ridgeline above Lake Brienz. It's a really tough hike with 3,000 meters of incline and dangerous drop-off, which lead to several deaths every year, so please be careful. We really wanted to hike to some of the ridgeline to see the view, but it sadly started raining, so we turned back. One day, we want to come back here when it's not rainy or windy and take on this beast of a hike. Next up is number 9, Grindelwald Fierst. The Fierst is a mountain above one of the most beautiful Swiss villages called Grindelwald. If you're a family with adventurous kids and want to go somewhere with a little bit of everything, this is the spot for you. From Interlaken, you can take a 35-minute train ride to Grindelwald and then take the gondola 25 minutes up to Grindelwald Fierst. At the top, there's paragliding, zip lines, mountain carts, and even a cliff lock that will get your heart racing. We actually went up to the Fierce for one of the most breathtaking alpine lakes in Switzerland called Behelpsy Lake. To reach the lake, it only took one hour and was super easy, so it's great for everyone. We didn't get so lucky with weather because there were clouds, but it was still super cool seeing the snow-covered mountains in June. Usually the views are much better than what you're seeing, so make sure you go on a sunny day. Next, we headed down to the cliff walk, and this ended up being better than expected. Expected. The weather cleared up a bit, so the views were getting more amazing around every corner. There's a beautiful viewpoint right at the edge, but the line was way too long, so we opted out. But one of my favorite things to do before we went back down was watch the paragliders run off the mountain towards the iconic Eiger North Face and the rest of the alpine peaks of the Jungfrau region. Up next is number 8, Ocean and Sea Lake. Only a 50 minute drive away from Interlaken lies the most beautiful alpine lake in all of Switzerland. Oceanense Lake is surrounded by massive snow covered peaks and in summer they melt into waterfalls that fill up the bright blue lake below. After driving here, you have two options, either head on a cable car to the top or hike for one hour up to the lake. The cable car is $36 for a round trip ticket or $18 with the Swiss half card. I will make sure to link the Swiss half card below this video and you should really get it if you're traveling Switzerland longer than four days because you get 50% off all transportation like gondolas, trains, and boats throughout all of Switzerland. We decided to hike up and it was a bit tough because of the incline, but 100% worth it. During the hike, you are surrounded by breathtaking mountains with more waterfalls than you can count. And after one hour, we arrived at this alpine lake and it did not disappoint. Although it was cloudy, we couldn't believe how massive the peaks were surrounding these blue waters. And after a quick beer and pretzels at the lodge, we decided to hike up another mile and a half to the backside of the lake where you can find these really cool chalets with an unbelievable view. We saw tons of mountain goats and the view just kept getting better and better the more we left the crowded areas behind. Now on to number seven, paragliding over Interlaken. Paragliding in Switzerland is high on everyone's bucket list and there's no better place to do it than in Interlaken. The cool thing about paragliding is that you can do it year round, so I bet winter is just as magical. The price is steep at around $210 per person for only about 20 minutes, but we still think it was worth it. You'll get picked up in Interlaken and drive 20 minutes high up in the mountain. After getting your safety speech, you start strapping into your pilot on the side of a hill. Once you're in the air, it's a very calm ride with stunning 360 60 degree views. Your pilot will ask if you want to go wild, and of course we said yes. Suddenly the pilot starts twisting and turning, and it felt like a crazy roller coaster. This really made the ride so much more fun. But we met a group of college kids, and let's just say they had a little too much to drink the night before, and they threw up spinning in the air. What's funny is that this is actually very common, so the pilots usually have a doggy bag with them that you can puke in, which is kind of funny. One of my favorite parts was passing right over the city center of Interlaken, watching the bright blue river rushing right below your legs. 
The entire experience from start to finish was only an hour and a half with 20 minutes of flight, so you still have plenty of your day left to explore. Make sure to book a sunny day with low winds. We got unlucky with clouds rolling in and high winds, but we did get lucky because they actually had to cancel the flights after us, so we were just happy we got to go at all. Next up is number six, the top of Europe. Jungfrau Jak, also known as the top of Europe, is not the highest mountain in Europe, although it is genius marketing by Switzerland's tourism board. This year-round mountain destination gets the nickname Top of Europe because it's the highest train station in Europe at 3,454 meters, which is still really impressive. Immediately when you enter Switzerland, this experience will be pushed to you by all tour companies and tons of billboards as a must-do. With this marketing, brings massive crowds no matter what time of year, so the best thing you could do is go as early as possible. One huge tip for Switzerland before you go on any hike or book any experience is to look at the live webcams at the top of these mountains. We use these cams every single day because what you see on the ground level can be totally different than at the top of the mountain. To get to the top, there are three different routes you can go, but the fastest starts in Grindelwald. First, we took a 30 minute train from Interlaken Ost to Grindelwald Terminal. Next, we took the first Eiger Express cable car at 8 a.m. sharp for 15 minutes up to Eiger Glacier, and then finally hopped on the Jungfrau train 26 minutes all the way to the top of Europe. The total time for us was around an hour and a half and the ticket price per person was $250 which was the most expensive experience we did while in Switzerland and a little crazy of a price if you ask me. Sadly when we checked the live cams in the morning everything was clear but after getting to the top this is what we saw. The mountain was covered in clouds the entire time we were up there. Now on a sunny day this is what it's supposed to look like. We've heard it has spectacular 360 degree views especially of the Aletsch Glacier which is the largest glacier in the Alps spanning 23 kilometers or 14 miles long. For the amount of money we paid, the clouds were super disappointing, but something you have to get used to when traveling in Switzerland because some days you will be unlucky with the weather. Fortunately, there was a lot more to do at the top, like walk through the Ice Palace, which is a network of ice tunnels running right underneath a glacier. Kids would absolutely love this place, especially with all the different ice sculptures around. Another reason to visit the top of Europe is because there's snow up here 365 days a year, and that will be special for those of you that have never experienced snow in your life. We actually walked out to the Glacier Plateau to have a snowball fight and take some amazing photos. There's also something called the Snow Fun Park that is open from mid-May to mid-October. Here you can go skiing, sledding, snow tubing, and even zipline above a glacier. Of course, all of this will be extra money though, so it can turn into an even more expensive day, so watch out. And lastly, you can't leave the top of Europe without getting some famous Swiss chocolate from Lindt. There's a Lindt chocolate shop up here where you can find every flavor possible, which really makes for a great ending to your time up at Jungfrau Jak. Now let's move on to number five, mountain towns. Only a 30 minute drive away from Interlaken above the breathtaking fairy tale town of Lauterbrunnen are some of the most beautiful mountain towns in the world. Our favorites were Murren, Gimmewald, and Wangen. Murren is actually the starting point to the scariest hike in Europe that we'll talk about later. But getting up to these towns is an experience within itself with insane views all around you either on a cable car or cogwheel train. What blew my mind is people were bringing their suitcases up to stay in hotels or chalets at the top of these mountains. We didn't stay up there because we had our van of course, but I would recommend it since the views were some of the best we saw throughout our 30 days in Switzerland. You can also get amazing Swiss fondue up there and some of the best beer you will have in your life. Ian was obsessed. We have not visited Germany yet, but the beer in Switzerland was by far our favorite beer out of any country in Europe so far. If you are a beer person, you need to try the Appenzeller beers. They were awesome. Coming up, number four, Grindelwald Canyon Swing. Interlaken is the adventure sports capital of the world, and I can tell you right now, it lives up to the hype. 30 minutes away from Interlaken is one of the craziest experiences you can have in your life. The Grindelwald Canyon Swing is a 300 foot drop where you swing between narrow canyons, it feels like you're gonna hit them, and you're right above a raging river. When we first got there, we couldn't believe how wild the entire setup looked, but the tour guides let us know that no one has ever died doing it which was great news this canyon swing was 143 dollars per person but i can guarantee the feeling you get from the top will be nothing you have ever experienced before in your life i 100 
recommend it to anyone. From the bottom, the tour guides take you to the top in a van and then you go on a brief hike until you reach the edge. Nothing is more terrifying than having to wait your turn while you watch everyone else jump into the abyss. But once you finally get to jump, your body goes into complete shock and it feels like you are falling forever. But really, after only a 5 second free fall from 90 meters, you swing through the canyon with the biggest smile on your face. Let's move on to number 3, Lake Briens. The word Interlaken literally means between two lakes because it sits right between Lake Thun and Lake Briens. In my opinion, the more magical of the two lakes is Lake Briens because of the color of the water. It has bright turquoise water that is surrounded by massive mountains on all sides, making it one of the most picturesque places in Switzerland. We stayed at an amazing campsite in Interlaken with our van, and one of our favorite routines was walking on the trails along the lake, stopping at all these different viewpoints. Now, Switzerland has some of the best free picnic areas where they provide you with firewood and a fire pit so you can cook out. We met some locals at one of the picnic spots, and he taught us how to make a life-changing dessert. First, you put a banana over the fire, and once it pops open, you put chocolate on top, which ends up melting in the most delicious snack. Throughout our time in Interlaken, we saw tons of people boating, paddleboarding, and swimming all around the lake, so there is tons to do. Another fun thing we did in Lake Briens is pull up our van to a scenic pullout. There's so many of them, and we made dinner one night. It's amazing to swim right from your van and be able to take in those views for free. Next up is number two, Lotzebrunnen. The fairy tale town of Lauterbrunnen is one of those places that everyone should see in their lifetime. Nothing beats the magical noise of 72 waterfalls pouring down the 1,000 foot rock walls of this valley. There are many viewpoints, but our favorite one had to be a two minute walk from the parking lot because you are able to see the church and Switzerland's highest free falling waterfall, all while seeing the entire valley, which was spectacular. This will be a very quick stop because Lauterbrunnen is is a small town that you can walk in 10 minutes. And lastly, we have number one, Murren Via Ferrata. Right above the fairy tale town of Lotte Brunnen is by far the scariest thing we have done in our lives. After taking two cable cars to Murin, you could rent your gear for $30 per person and go on this crazy via frata without a guide. Sadly, someone did fall to their death two days after filming this video, so if it's your first time doing a via frata, I highly recommend hiring a tour guide from Intersport where we rented our gear. If you don't know what a via frata is, it's like an obstacle course on the side of a mountain. You'll go on tight ropes, suspension bridges, and crazy steps on the side of a thousand foot vertical rock wall. This was the biggest adrenaline rush we have ever had and we've been skydiving, bungee jumping, swimming with sharks, and canyon swinging. During this three hour hike, there were a couple times where it actually felt like we were going to die. The whole time, you'll have to use your two clips to unhook and hook back to the steel cable line. We had to unhook and hook about 150 times, so you kind of take it slow throughout this whole hike. Physically, it's not the hardest hike, but definitely the most mentally challenging. And if you're afraid of heights, then you might poop your pants and go into complete shock because this is crazy. If you do end up going, please be careful and hire a tour guide. Remember, your life is way more important than getting shots like this. Don't try to copycat me. I am definitely an idiot. Burn like 